Hi everyone, so welcome back to another session of uh, the SOLIDWORKS 2021 launch. Today we're going to talk about uh, the optimization service. What is the optimization service? It's a very uh, popular uh, topic uh, these days. Uh, we, uh, I'm going to explain you the kind of documentation you receive when we do an audit with your company and uh, what kind of uh, b benefits you can have uh, from this service. So. Uh, my name is Stéphane Loisel. I've been uh, in engineering for the last maybe 20 years. Uh, I've, been, I've done uh, seven years in uh, electronic engineering. And uh, 12 years ago, I went on the mechanical road with SolidWorks. So I've been using SolidWorks for more than 12 years, 12 years now. And uh, I've had many chairs uh, uh, in uh, engineering. So I've been a project manager, I've been a drafter, uh, I've been in charge of best practices uh, for, the, for the company uh, methods of working inside SolidWorks. So uh, today I'm gonna share some of my experiences uh, regarding uh, administrating and using SolidWorks. Uh, I'm gonna try to uh, target some CBIs for you, so your very specific critical business issue. Um, and I'm gonna present to you what kind of documentation you're gonna receive and why you really should uh, go uh, with the optimization service and uh, uh, what are the, the stuff that you're gonna receive uh, for this service. So let's talk about the documentation. It's pretty much, uh, the same structure for every company because I realized through the years that um, uh, it's it's really common between companies uh, the, the the same stuff comes back uh, all the time so uh, I'm gonna show you why uh, I'm giving you a, a document here which is the uh, analysis of the performance okay uh, I'm going to give you a very, very good example. Obviously, I'm trying to uh, speak to different audi uh, audience here. I'm pretty sure I, I have here uh, project managers and CAD admin and uh, uh, drafters. So um, I'm going to show you my biggest example, my uh, an example that I love to show all the time. It's going to take a while for the assembly to open. I'm going to show you what are the hurdles that every drafters uh, faces all day long so i'm going to open up an assembly here uh, and i'm going to explain something to you is i still have drafters that's been around for 10 years in solidworks and they're they, they still think that this behavior of solidworks is normal okay so uh obviously as a project manager i was i was giving tasks to some of my drafters and there were always like uh well, that, that, that's going to take me half a day. This assembly is so slow to open. Uh, I know your changes are really easy to do, but what can I do? It's going to take me half a day to do it. Okay. So, um, like I said, I'm, I met some, uh, some old drafters that's been around maybe 10 years in SolidWorks, and they still think that this behavior that you, you will see at the computer screen, uh, they still think it's uh, normal for them. Okay. So as you can see, I have uh, 3,000 components opening right now, okay? Uh, so SolidWorks is opening. I have my little blue uh, blue thing that uh, go, goes around and goes around and goes around. Uh, I'm not even ready to go in my assembly yet. Uh, okay, there it is. So I'm trying to turn, okay? As you can see now, I'm trying to turn again. Nothing is responding. So even... Every year, SolidWorks, they, they say, oh, we're going faster, we're going faster. There is still some stuff that you need to really be careful about. So you see now the, the, the system is completely lagging. I'm trying to click, let's say, my first component here, and I'm going to right click. Okay, so now I'm not going to touch anything. I'm going to wait for him to right click on, uh, as you can see, he, he went in memory and he saw that I clicked some places inside of the assembly and nothing is, is responding. And like I said, for a lot of people, this is normal behavior for them. And I'm going to show you that it's really not a normal behavior of SolidWorks. Uh, so let's wait for the system to, I would say, unchoke. 
there you go, he's thinking, he's thinking again, I cannot do my work, uh, maybe I'm gonna take a sip of coffee, because uh, we drafters takes a lot of, uh, a lot of coffee, uh, waiting for Solidors to at least give me uh, what I asked of him, so once again i have my blue uh, my blue thing going around solidworks is really really thinking about it oh he just moved is he going to give me what i want so believe me this is uh this is something that that i see all the time when i meet company uh, for uh, solidworks optimization service uh this is for me a, a very uh critical business issue okay is waiting for the system um so let's wait again oh there you go i do have open part uh, is it gonna go oh there you go okay so now the other thing that you everybody everybody is facing is i'm i'm just gonna move this around and you know what i don't have to change this part i'm gonna close this blue arrow uh, blue uh, blue circle again i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait there you go, another sip of coffee. So if you're wondering why your drafters are drinking so much coffee, uh, they usually are waiting for SolidWorks to just respond. And believe me, 3,000 components, for me it's a bit small, meaning that uh, I used to work with 80,000 parts inside of an assembly, so uh, believe me, it was long. So, do you believe that this is a normal behavior of SolidWorks? If you still do, uh, this is why you should have a bit of help from Solid Experts or the Solid Experience Group. Uh, this is an issue for me, okay? And I'm gonna explain you just the single settings that is going to help you and what is co causing this. Obviously, when it comes to uh, performance of SolidWorks, uh, I'm going a lot further than just what I'm uh, about to show you. There's uh, McMaster parts, there's triangles and stuff. Uh, but right now, I think this is a very, very good example. So. I'm going to open up my uh, my little sphere here again, which as you can see, it's kind of long to give me my answer. Come on, buddy. There you go. Open. Okay. So the settings that I will show you is this one. Okay. Inside of a prop, in, inside of a template, usually uh, people don't uh, look at this and it's the image quality. Okay. As you can see, I've exaggerated a bit here. Okay, I've put it, uh, I've pushed it uh, all uh, all the way through. Okay, and there's a reason why I did this because in 2021, I think it's here. They they they've pushed it uh, up to here uh, in the last version, but. The thing is, is people are uh, keeping their templates for maybe 10 years, and I'll show you an example of, uh, of this uh, a bit uh, later. Uh, people are still having old templates, and SolidWorks uh, used to have a tendency of pushing uh, this bar up to here. I think it was until 2017, maybe. Uh, so people that are reusing parts that are uh, from uh, 2017 and below, they still have these settings uh, really, really high, okay? So this is why when you open up uh, maybe, um, even if it's a new assembly that's pointing to old parts, uh, you're gonna have this exact behavior that you saw the blue uh, little circle going around all the time. And uh, this is fixable, okay? So uh, in this example, okay, uh, this is what I wanna show you. This settings that you just saw is the equivalent of this, okay? Having too much triangles to calculate for SOLIDWORKS. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of triangles to create that geometry on the screen, okay? Uh, we don't need all this. Obviously, when we do uh, optimization service uh, with our team at the Solid Experts and the Solid Experience Group, uh, it's going to be tailored for your specific needs. Okay, by this I mean that if uh, if you're a company that does uh, jewelry, okay, obviously I'm not going to say uh, I'm I'm not going to say 
this image quality, uh, don't push it too far. Okay, uh, you should keep it in this uh, in this region because you need precision. You're always gonna have maybe one, two, three items inside of SolidWorks. It's not gonna slow down. But if you're doing tractors or whatever type of assembly you're doing with more than thousand pieces. Uh, obviously, if you keep it in the, I call this the jewelry region, okay, um, I'm not going to have the same answer uh, depending on uh, what type of industry you are uh, in. So this uh, slider that we saw earlier is controlling the amount of triangles to show uh, inside of the screen. So can you imagine if I have 3,000 times this amount of triangles? That's why the system is choking right now. And I'm going to give you the example here so i'm going to discard everything and this is where usually what people do because they didn't change anything uh they usually kill the process of uh, of solid orbs because they, they don't want to wait to go back to the assembly and close again the assembly since they changed nothing okay so uh, the reflex of uh, most of you drafters and myself included uh, back in the days um, i was just gonna kill the process to uh, to restart solid orbs again and uh, go somewhere else okay because as you can see it's long okay and even if i close this don't save the system is hanging okay there you go uh i'm gonna show you what is the correct behavior of uh of solidworks here okay uh the exact exact same assembly okay three thousand components and you will see there you go I'm already, I'm already in, okay? I'm already, I can move my stuff. I can click here, click here, click here, click here. I hope, I hope you enjoy the difference right there, okay? So uh, if I open this, okay, and the same ball and I'm moving around and I'm closing this, I'm back, okay? Do you imagine this critical business issue that I can, we can settle for you guys. This for me, uh, just to be clear, like when we do optimization service, what is, uh, what is my goal and the goal of our team doing uh, optimization, uh, optimization, optimization service, sorry, is uh, it's not to make you save money, like uh, you're not gonna save 10 cents uh, out of the dollar, okay? My goal here is how many projects can you uh, do with the same team? Okay, uh, last year we did 100 projects. Well, my goal here is to make, uh, to make sure that you can do 180 with the same time and the same team that you already have, just by uh, targeting some CBIs like this one. Okay, uh, so this already is a, is a free trick, okay, for you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy uh, this one. Uh, the difference here is this, uh, I'm going to show you with uh, the exact same example I gave you a bit earlier. This is my usually my favorite settings, image quality. Uh, I push it down around here, okay? Uh, as you can see, I have a sphere. This is presentable on the screen. This is really okay for me. Like I said, I'm not in uh, jewelry mode or jewelry settings, okay? Uh, and the difference is this, okay? Look at the amount of triangles for the same geometry, okay? We do have the same geometry on the screen, so we don't have to have that many triangles to, uh, to work all day. So this is, uh, for me, a really normal behavior of SOLIDWORKS, okay? So if you hear otherwise from uh, even a drafter that's been uh, around in SOLIDWORKS for many, many years, if they don't know the settings, uh, uh, it's not normal. So the difference here is if I have to work, let's say I have to, uh, to pierce that sphere here, uh, obviously, uh, with this kind of settings that I just show you, I'm going to be able to do it in maybe a minute, under a minute. And if I go back to my first uh, example, it's going to take me five, ten minutes. Okay, so uh, this is the kind of stuff that we really look uh, when we do uh, our optimization service. So. I did start a bit technical. This is why we uh, release an, an analysis of the performance of your SOLIDWORKS, of your uh, drafting team, okay? The next one is this, installation and IT requirements. So obviously when a SOLIDWORKS is slow like this, I'm pretty sure everyone heard this is, 
uh, the drafter is complaining, is SolidWorks is slow, I'm going to call the IT guy and I'm going to say, I need more RAM, okay? I need uh, 64 gig of RAM. Believe me, it's money thrown out the window. In my experience, I would say 16 gig of RAM is okay, depending if you're doing a very, very large assembly, I'm going to recommend maybe 32 for the price of a new 16 gig uh, uh, RAM is not that high uh, these days, so I'm going to recommend maybe going to 32. But if you go over that, that's money just lost. Okay, so I'm, uh, we are looking at your machines, at your computers to make sure that uh, you can just uh, tweak some stuff or uh, that you have a correct answer on what are the requirements for your specific needs, for your specific uh, company. So it, it is really tailored towards uh, helping you guys uh, have the correct answer for your type of business. Okay. Another uh, thing that I talk here in it, and it's just a quick example that people, uh, a lot of people forget. The exception of the anti, uh, antivirus that you have on your computer. So uh, a lot of people forget this, but every time that I communicate with the server, okay, if my antivirus doesn't have the uh, extensions of, uh, extensions of uh, SolidWorks, so SLDPRT, SLDASM, uh, SLDRW, uh, DWG, all the extensions of uh, engineering, uh, the antivirus is scanning all those all the time. Okay, so don't forget to uh, to put it uh, inside of your exceptions. So those are the kind of examples that uh, we do write uh, some documentation about it specific to uh, your company. Another one that I talk a lot about is, uh, I think there's a big misunderstanding regarding the templates that uh, is been used for creating parts inside SOLIDWORKS or assemblies or drawings. And I'm gonna give you a very nice example here. Uh, the goal, and this is another critical uh, business issue that uh, we would like to settle with you guys is, uh, okay, my SOLIDWORKS was already open, so it's just gonna open another one, doesn't matter. Uh, the other uh, CBIs that we want to target is uh, crashes, okay? Uh, there's a good reason that every time that we speak on technical support, we, uh, we always advise that you should redo your templates every year. You should redo your uh, SOLIDWORKS settings here, though those uh, beautiful options here. Uh, you should not take the ones from 2019 and just push it into uh, 2021. Uh, and it's speci uh, specifically true for uh, templates, okay? Um, so let's take an example here of this. I have this company, because uh, we always ask the same thing when it comes to optimization service uh, uh, regarding this question is, uh, I'm going to ask, uh, do a cube inside of a template and send it to me, okay? So let's take an example of one of my clients that sent me this. I have a little tool here that can... I cannot share this tool, but I have great news for you uh, inside of uh, Solid Experts uh, tools. Uh, we're, we're going to be able to give you this, uh, uh, this tool is... Uh, okay, so regarding templates, when people are using templates from the old days, okay, they, al they always do uh, file save as, file save as every year of their templates. Uh, it is very, very problematic for the simple reason that I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to take this again. There you go. Okay, so this client has been using and saving as this template since 2001 plus. Okay, can you imagine that this template is 19 years old? So as you can see, this cube, uh, this client was still on 2019, okay? But uh, if you look at this cube, the, um, the sketch has been done in 2019 and the boss extrude has been done in 2019. But if you look here, uh, the, um, sorry, it's in French, but uh, the, the, the engine, the 3D engine that's been used, that's still being used to create this geometry dates from 2004. Four, okay, so why why it is for me a critical business issue is this? Um, let's say, uh, do you think that SolidWorks has been able to test every combination of version 
uh, for uh, for your template, it's just impossible. Okay. Okay. Let, let let's take this. Okay. The database, uh, not the database, but the functionality of this template for uh, the material dates from 2004. Okay. Let's say I want to have a sheet metal uh, link to material uh, inside of my um, of my Excel file of uh, of uh, bending. Okay. Obviously, there's a big, huge chance that it's going to crash because uh, this material error functionality dates from 2004. Okay, uh, this is why I call this uh, I call this a big critical business issue. Is this is crashing? Okay, what happens when a solid or crashes? Okay. Technically, uh, I'm pretty sure you, uh, everyone saw this. Is instead of calling technical support, okay, they try to fix that their, uh, themselves. They go on YouTube and uh, uh, they see a whole bunch of uh, of uh, answers everywhere. Or worst is they're gonna uh, tap on the shoulder of their uh, neighbor here that works uh, right aside, and they're gonna say, "Hey, can you help me uh, with this?" So now you have two employees look at, looking at a screen, not doing their work. Okay, so this for me is uh, very critical inside of a team. Uh, this is why when I give this documentation here, this is one of the reasons uh, that uh, when we give this documentation, we do talk about those kind of uh, critical business issue here. So this uh, was for the installation and IT requirements. I'm just going to give you a quick other example of something that people are not aware is the CAD admin dashboard. Okay, uh, sorry for the rest of the text. Uh, it, it's in French, but uh, obviously uh, the documentation is going to be in English if uh, your company uh, is in the U.S. or uh, is speaking in English here in Quebec. Uh, but still, the SolidWorks CAD admin dashboard is free for everyone who is under maintenance. Okay. And what can I do with this is very, very cool is uh, I have an overview of every computer that uses SolidWorks inside of my company. Okay. Uh, I can see who changed their system options, who's messing around with their system options. I can see who uh, doesn't have a driver, uh, a supported driver for their graphic card, which is obviously another point of crashing. Okay, uh, I can. Uh, there's more columns here that uh, you don't see in this picture, but another example is if I open up this CAD admin dashboard, I'm going to be able to see who crashes uh, during the week. Okay, let's say this specific machine crashed eight times uh, during this week. Okay, obviously, I'm going to go and see him and we'll check the machine. Okay, there's something very wrong with this machine. And usually uh, that's the thing is the, the drafters don't say nothing to their, uh, to their managers uh, and they just restart SolidWorks all the time. For me, this is time lost on a project and it's, uh, for me, it's another very critical business issue here. Like I said a bit earlier, I'm, I'm pointing maybe two tricks out of a hundred of every of those documentation. There's a lot more going on in there. It's very tailored uh, towards your specific needs and your specific questions and your sp uh, specific CBIs. Um, so this is why I'm just giving a few examples of the kind of documentation you would receive uh, after an audit from, uh, from solid experts uh, regarding the uh, optimization service. Third, critical CBI for me that is very, very, very important is this one. Do you have a best practice document inside of your company? I'm going to explain why. The most common uh, complaint from every user is, uh, is uh, okay, my name is Stefan and my boss comes in and he says, look, uh, you should take John's project uh, and uh, finish it because uh, John is on something else. Okay. And right now I'm like, uh, oh, come on, are you serious, John? Uh, he doesn't know how to draw and uh, he's doing stuff uh, this way and this way and this way that I either don't understand or uh, I'm going to say he doesn't know how to draw. Okay, this is very common inside of a team. There's a million roads to uh, go to Rome inside SolidWorks and people are working way differently all the time. Okay, and this is what I realized managing a team of uh, 15 drafters is um, 
you can have all the meetings in the world, okay? Uh, everybody's going to sit around a the table. They're going to say, look, uh, yes, uh, we should do this like this. Good idea. We should do this like that. Every time the, the, the meeting f uh, is finished, they all go back to their station and the boss comes in with a new task. They say they need it for yesterday as usual. What, what do you think will happen? Okay, they will go back to their old socks very quickly okay uh, because they're fast in their way of doing things and they, they will forget everything that's been told in the meeting okay uh, and the other thing that i always like to say is uh half a decision is a mess squared okay uh if you don't write down those decisions okay nobody's going to respect it okay this is why i give a uh, best practice the start of a best practice document uh, when we do an audit for your company, we're going to tailor the beginning of a best practice document. It's not the most complete. It's the start to help you have some sort of structure regarding what is a best practice document. And uh, it's going to be, I hope, uh, your, your wish to, uh, to fill this best practice document, okay? To be able to settle those issues of every, everyone's working differently. And I'm going to give you another CBI and why do I target this, uh, this uh, exact documentation. That's a, that's a reality for here in Canada. Uh, I didn't take a look at the stats for the US though, but uh, okay. Canada right now is ranked number four in the world for uh, employee turnover, okay? Uh, so we do have drafters inside of the team. Uh, they, they leave, another one comes in, they leave, another one comes in. This is a reality for a, a lot of business right now. So um, this documentation actually uh, is, you have a new guy that comes in the team, okay? You give him this document, take a week, I don't mind, take a week to read it. It's going to answer maybe 80% of your questions and it's going to be a pleasure for me to answer the 20% of the question that you still have regarding our way of doing things here inside of the company. This is why I think this is a, this is very, very important uh, CBI to uh, settle inside of a team of engineering. Um, okay, so... This is regarding uh, a best practice document. Something that, that I would like to quickly show you is this. A lot of people don't know this, and I just, this is my, my favorite friend, okay? Uh, what is the design checker? So, if you have a license of uh, professional and plus, okay? So, it's not available with the uh, SolidWorks standard, uh, but if you do have a professional and plus, look at this, okay? If you don't fully define your sketch, you're not passing the design checker. If you, uh, let's take this one, if uh, you fixed all your parts inside of uh, your assembly all the time, which is usually a very bad practice, you cannot pass my design checker. Uh, if uh, you save your assembly with uh, the, the Christmas tree I call uh, yellow and red everywhere inside of your assembly, you cannot pass the design checker. So uh, you can verify like this um, a lot of stuff that's already built in this, uh, this software. Uh, if you override dimension, th this one I love it, uh, you cannot pass the design checker. And uh, obviously this one is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I always had a field which was uh, supplier, okay? What is the supplier name of this part? And I was always taking parts that my drafters were always forgetting to answer the, that, that question inside of the custom properties. So if I click here and I type supplier and I say for an empty value, you don't pass the design checker, well, um, he's going to receive an alert and I'm going to show you why. He's going to receive an alert that he didn't pass the design checker. The other uh, last thing here is the uh, custom check. You can create macros to check anything you would like. Okay. A quick example here is uh, add drafters that don't ask me why they were zooming their assemblies uh, all the way down uh, the screen and they were saving. Okay. So now in PDM, when I was clicking on my assembly and I wanted the preview down there, I had a little dot there. Uh, it was look when you leave there, those uh, drafters go uh, without uh, some sort of uh, 
uh, of check uh, checking system. Uh, they they can do uh, pretty crazy stuff. So um, actually, it was a rule that uh, zoom to fit isometric view before saving. This was a custom check that I was doing. So you didn't pass my design checker if uh, you uh, you didn't do this. Okay. The example, uh, I didn't create one for this, uh, for this uh, presentation here. I'm going to have a little quick error here, but this is the kind of results that you should uh, receive from the design checker. Okay. So it's going to list you actually everything that you forgot. Okay. And uh, you can just click here, click here and say, okay, uh, I didn't change my font for this or my, the, the supplier. Uh, uh, custom property is empty and this and that. So you can see the power and the value of this. And I'm going to push that a bit further. Inside of a PDM, okay, you can actually make an automation of this design checker. So in example, okay, uh, I'm the one who's doing all the checking inside of the company and John is trying to uh, send me a file uh, through an approval inside of PDM to me, okay. Technically, I'm not going to receive squat until he passed the design checker because PDM is going to use a machine to pass the design checker and say, look, go back to John because he needs to finish his, uh, his, his stuff before, um, uh, before he can go into approbation. So, like I said, this is my, this is my best friend. Uh, when it comes to managing a team and uh, having all those best practices that uh, we uh, we try to uh, to have inside of a company, uh, this is at least some sort of automation that we can uh, create uh, for uh, for you guys. And like I said, uh, regarding this is it's only maybe two or three uh, CBIs or two or three tricks that I can give you guys. Uh, to be uh, that you're going to receive when you have a full optimization service here. The next thing is having an action plan. Obviously, uh, we're we're going to talk about a lot of stuff in our in our meeting, and I'm going to explain uh, at the end uh, what is the process of an optimization service. Uh, what is the action plan? Is actually uh, let's take an example of me because we are a team here uh, of uh, optimization service. I'm trying to put myself in your shoes as a manager and I do have all this that we discussed uh, during our meetings. Where should I start? Okay, uh, this is the way I usually do my action plan is um, uh, first off, where's my bank for the buck? Where, where should I start is this? Okay, usually I go, um, I go on the performance road and there's a reason for this is as you saw earlier, Opening up an assembly in uh, in 30 seconds versus two minutes and a half for me, it's time gain right there. Okay, uh, that's going to enable me to do more complicated stuff. I, I meet some companies. I'm going to give you another example is uh, keywords. Okay, uh, inside of my old company, um, we were doing uh, chairs, uh, interactive chairs for. Uh, uh, cinema and stuff and when you don't control your keywords this is what happens is uh, every drafters are naming their stuff like uh, add I'm sorry I'm gonna uh, mix match some French words also but add chair seats shies uh, assies uh, a lot of different words for the same product okay uh, obviously my statistics went out the window because if I want to know how many chairs the I sold this year, it's not going to be possible, okay? Uh, so this is why I, I, when I have those kind of discussion, if it's a pro problematic or a CBI for your company, we're going to talk about it. But do you think it's going to be first in my action plan? No, no, no. Uh, of course, this is a long process. It's, it's going to take a lot of time to settle. Uh, you're going to have uh, a lot of people implicated in this. So I would prefer having my team work on performance, have a gain in value very, very fast. And uh, it's going to give me actually create time inside of my team to settle the more, uh, the more tricky part of uh, 
uh, the discussions we will have with uh, with your company uh, regarding optimization service. So this is why I create some sort of action plan with steps that we would go. Okay, it's the start of an action plan. Uh, obviously, uh, if uh, if in our discussion, let's say you don't have PDM uh, and we talk about PDM. Uh, obviously, I cannot create an act, we cannot create an action plan towards implementing PDM until you take the decision to go uh, the PDM road. So, but still, it is a very good action plan on uh, the 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 type, uh, not the type, sorry, but the, the the steps that you should take regarding all the discussions that we had regarding performance, communication, uh, whatever we discuss, uh, learning from your uh, critical business issue inside of your company. The last Last document, but not the least, is uh, the documentation that we give is uh, is is separated like this for a reason. Is if we would bunch this all in the same document, uh, I doubt a president's going to take 150 150 page document and read through all of it. Okay, and when he's going to come to the step where I say, uh, "Look, uh, you're doing mates like this. You should really do it like this." He's going to get bored very quickly. Uh, this document is more oriented to the the managers. Okay. So so it's an overview of what we talked in words that are more targeted uh, for a manager. Okay, so this is why we have so many different documents is uh, this one, the installation and the IT requirements obviously is going to go to the CAD manager and the IT guy. Uh, the president doesn't need to know uh, which graphic card, uh, unless he's interested, obviously, uh, go ahead, read. Uh, but uh, this is why we split our documentation like this. I hope I explained uh, with good examples, uh, specific examples. Uh, I hope uh, it was talking to you guys because, like I said, uh, I've been in your shoes. I've been on the other side of the table as either a drafter or a manager. And this is the thing that I realized over uh, 12 years of uh, mechanical engineering is all those... Uh, all those CBIs, all those little problematic that uh, if we think outside the box and we do have a tool to uh, to make it better. And I'm going to say this again is it's not a matter of uh, how much money can I make you save? How much uh, how much time can I make you save? It, for me, at the end of the day, is this is can I make 180 project instead of 100 this year with the same team uh, in place? How is the optimization service, how does it go? Usually uh, we spend two days inside of your company and we try to meet every department, uh, mostly engineering, okay? But uh, we like to, uh, let's say, um, uh, I'm going to give you another example. Why do I need to uh, meet the production department, okay? Uh, I met uh, a production department not long ago that... Uh, he was saying like, okay, engineering is finished with his, uh, with their, uh, with their conception. Uh, they're dropping all the PDFs in this folder. I was looking at the folder and I was like, okay, there's 180 PDFs in there. So what do you do next? He says, well, I open up uh, one by one and uh, okay, this one is going for uh, soldering. This one is going for assembly. Uh, this one is going to CNC and. I'm like, okay, you spend all that time uh, uh, going and sorting through a bunch of PDF. Uh, how much time do you take uh, for every project doing this? He's like, oh, I'm taking uh, maybe an hour and a half a day. Okay, good. Now we're talking. Now we're going somewhere. Okay, in PDM, I, I can... Uh, I can, uh, if there's a tag on uh, on this conception and it's already uh, tagged as, uh, let's say, assembly, well, it's going to go to a specific directory. So you see the kind of discussion that we have. It's not only with uh, engineering. It's trying to meet all uh, of the department. Uh, let's say the buying departments. Do you have your long lead items in time? Okay. A lot of engineering team right now is, uh, is making some sort of a cascade, a step. Okay. So... Engineering, they finish everything. Now it goes on the next step to uh, buying and after that production. So um, having some sort of ecosystem inside of a company is very, very important. Uh, and, in, and in this example, uh, this company went to PDM for a very good reason. But uh, one of the reasons was this is uh, 
while we were doing the conception inside of SolidWorks, well, the buying departments were already aware of what was the long lead item so they can buy uh, first to make sure that uh, for this date they add their, uh, their, their uh, product and stuff. So you can see that it's not only engineering right now is which department needs information from the engineering department, okay? There's nothing worse for me, uh, like I said, as a manager, is um, having a call all the time. I'm missing this. I'm missing this information I'm mi uh, or this information. I don't think it's correct. Uh, so if they can have access to that information by themselves, I just saved a lot of phone calls. Like I was saying is uh, we spent two days uh, either at your company or to the web. Okay. Uh, obviously in these days, uh, it's been mostly uh, through web, but uh, it really went uh, very, very uh, fine uh, with everyone that we met. So uh, we spent two days. After that, there's three days for us to uh, tailor this documentation specifically for you with your CBIs, with your uh, information. And it's it's kind of the, the, the results of what uh, has been... Um, uh, what we realize in those two days uh, inside of uh, your company. So it's a total of five days, okay, for this optimization service. Uh, it's very, very popular, so you should book in advance, let me tell you. Uh, sometimes there's a bit of waiting, but uh, it's so worth it. At the end of the day, uh, uh, I really have the feeling that we're helping a lot of companies like yourselves. And um, like I said, it's just a matter of uh, how many projects can you do next year instead of what you're doing right now. With a few of the examples that I, uh, that I showed you uh, earlier, I hope you... Uh, Enjoy this session and I uh, hope to see you soon regarding an optimization service. And uh, for the rest uh, of the uh, SolidWorks launch here, uh, 2021 is going to be a great version. Just don't forget that uh, please redo your template uh, if you change version and redo your system settings. Uh, if you already had our uh, optimization service, you already have a documentation regarding this. So thank you and have a nice day. Bye.